Come baby. If you have a KFX 450R or you followed this build, you're probably aware that the battery situation is it's just kind of not the greatest. Uh, they have a very small battery compartment. Kawasaki put a very tiny battery in these machines and they work, they get the job done. When it was stock, it was like, okay. Uh, but if you were constantly starting and stopping and starting and stopping, it did die really quickly. And like the reliability factor, I just, I, I, I felt like I could never really rely on this thing. It's already left me stranded out in the sand dunes, uh, I think twice. So if you don't have a jumper pack or somebody with you, it's just not a fun experience. Tried the lithium ion battery, that didn't work out. Since upgrading the quad with a high compression piston and cams and some other modifications, it's only gotten worse because the engine has to work or the starter has to work a little bit harder to start the engine and the battery just does not last. So what I'm gonna do is try to alleviate the problem by upgrading to a 400EX battery. So I'm not gonna do a tutorial here or a step-by-step -step because I'm not sure if this is gonna work. But because I know this is a common problem, I've met uh, several guys with KFXs out on the trails and just from the comments that you guys have given me, I know that the battery thing is just weird and some people have done battery relocates already and then put a bigger battery. So I think um, what I wanna do is I'm just gonna do the job, kinda stop along the way and uh, give little updates and hopefully it will work out and you guys will be able to see the way that I do it so that if you wanna do the upgrade, you'll be able to do it as well. Now the parts to get this job done, I've got laid out here, at least what I plan, maybe I'll need more, but we've got some heavy, this is four gauge wire, that should be great for our battery cables. We've got terminal ends here, so once we, once we cut this to the appropriate length, we'll be able to uh, bolt those things up. And I've got a battery box for a Honda 400EX. These are all Honda OEM parts. And then of course we've got a battery for a 400EX. Um, I think that the 400EX battery is just right. It's significantly larger than the KFX battery, but it's a smaller battery. Honda 400EX is, uh, you know, they're like unstoppable. And I just feel that this is gonna be the perfect size battery. It'll definitely be an upgrade over the KFX no matter what. Now right up here is where the OEM battery location is on the KFX and you can see how tiny this battery is. This is a lithium ion battery and it's extremely small. I'll be pulling this out in a second to show you a comparison uh, to that 400EX battery. Now where I'm planning to move the battery is right back here. On the Honda 400EX, that's the stock location. So I'm basically gonna try to mount it up just like that and then run the cables and this really shouldn't be that big of a job. Of course, I always say shit like that and then three weeks later, I'm still doing the job. Now I'm gonna be doing most of the work on my own. So I'm gonna pull the plastics off and get the batteries out and then we'll touch base. Okay, so I got the plastics and everything off. Tank is pulled back. What a mess, what a mess. So here's our batteries over here. Wait till you see these things. So these three batteries, this is the 400EX battery. This is the traditional KFX battery. Now they're both the same brand, but um, those are the OEM sizes. And then this is the lithium ion battery from Tusk. I love Tusk, but uh, this battery I do not recommend. I just, I didn't have good luck with it. It says it has a charge, uh, but it was, I don't know how accurate that really was, but you can see it's like microscopic, even to the OEM battery. Now, supposedly this had 140 cold cranking amps. The OEM one has 135, or at least this variation of it. And uh, the 400EX battery has 180. So that's a significant increase. That's like, what, 25, 30% more cold cranking amps. Um, even though it didn't really have that big of an issue cranking. It was just that it would get worn out really quickly. But cold cranking amps are always good. Um, the faster you can turn over an engine, usually the better that it's the better it starts. So that should be good. Here is the old battery box. It's got stuffers in it because uh, the little lithium ion battery was so small. But we'll be uh, getting rid of that. And then here's our 400EX battery. And you'll see on the side of the battery box, it's got a thing for the starter relay. So typically the starter relay goes up front in the KFX 450R. You can see the old prongs right there that I can remove. And instead of running the battery cables from the front all the way to the back where we're gonna be putting the battery, I've decided that I'm going to extend the wire harness that plugs into the relay. We'll run that down the frame in the back here because you always wanna keep your battery cables as short as possible. We get better power out of them that way and uh, it'll connect right up to the starter under here. So we'll have a fairly short distance for our battery cables. And I've gone ahead and marked where we need to drill in order to bolt up that battery box. We'll do that first. All right, now I've already gone ahead and pre-fit this box before I took the plastics off. So I wanted to make sure that the fender flare does not didn't uh, rub against the battery box. And uh, we got lucky, this hole right here is actually perfect. So it's a great template if you guys do decide to do this. You can more than likely use that same hole, but I would still recommend measuring um, before you do this. 
So we'll use that hole, and then I have another hole marked back here, and I'm gonna drill and put a nut cert, just like they have in the, from the factory. And uh, that should be a pretty clean design. And then we'll bore this one out too. All right, now we're gonna put nut starts in. These are really easy. They're like these little, um, little they're inserts. They pop right in the hole, and then when they're, so you can call them rivet nuts too, and then when it squeezes, it basically uh, binds to whatever it is that you're putting it in. So uh, for aluminum, it's really common because you can put a steel nut cert into aluminum because you know threaded aluminum usually doesn't work out too well. Uh, this is a really, this might seem like, oh, well, I, I don't have a nut cert tool. Uh, these are pretty inexpensive, and there's like a million and one uses for these things. It's the kind of thing, it's like once you have it, you can't believe you didn't have it before. Uh, really easy though, you just put it in the hole and squeeze this and unthread it. And there you go, you've got a threaded hole in your aluminum, really, really easy to do. And if this ever strips out, these are easy to drill and then put a new nut cert in it. It just makes life really easy. All right, now we can actually mount our battery box up. All right, now on the back one, you can see this tab is on a slant for the Honda. So you could probably just blast a screw in there and uh, it would work, especially if you put Loctite on there. But I want it to look a little bit cleaner. So I have these plastic bushings and I've sanded them on an angle. You could do that in a, in a, on a bench vise or even just with a piece of sandpaper on a bench. I've got a, a bench sander from Harbor Freight that made my life a lot easier. And uh, I just put an angled one on the top and the bottom and that'll just make the bolt go in nice and straight. Now, I don't like the way those spacers kind of slid to the side like that. That probably would hold, but I think what I'm gonna do is, because this is only held on by those two bolts, I think I'm gonna upgrade this from an M6 to an M8. I'll easily, I can just drill that nut cert out and put a larger one in there and have a larger bolt. And it'll also be the same size as the inner diameter of these spacers, and that will keep them aligned. a lot better. Okay, so the box is on there. It's lined up nicely. Now, the only thing is there's these two holes in the bottom of the battery box that typically bolt up to the frame of the 400EX. They have these two little L brackets that stick out. So what I had to do is cut these pieces out of bar stock and I'm about to tack it together. I made this little elbow right here and uh, bolted it to an existing hole on the frame. And then I just ran that bar stock underneath and uh, both of these bolts go right through. Comes out this side, I'll tack that together, and I'm gonna run this up to the frame and put another nut cert right there. And that's steel, that should be plenty solid. All right, there it is. All steel, coated it in satin black. This should be really solid, give us plenty of support. You can see I put a couple nut certs in the bottom of this just to make it a little bit easier for installation. And while that was drying, I ran all of our cables and everything. Here is the wire I ran all the way down the frame from the front up here. It actually comes from right here. I have to take this bracket off right here. I forgot about that. Uh, and then I also ran our positive and negative cables. I, I just used that red line because I didn't have any black and put he, uh, black heat shrink on the negative side. And then if you come over here, you can see, I had to take the exhaust stuff to get in here, but uh, the cables I have attached uh, right to the starter and they, I put the negative on the leg of the starter. I think that's a better setup than stock. All right, so now at this point, should be able to bolt this up, throw the battery in and pretty much we're good to go. Wow, not sure I've ever had such good fitment in my life. <laughs> That's what she said.
All right, there she is. She's all done, looks really good. I've got the battery tender on there. Uh, I didn't actually give this thing an initial charge, so I just wanna make sure it's topped off. I did give it a good bit of cranking to test it out. And uh, I'll tell you what, it took the abuse and it didn't slow down at all. So just uh, topping it off with that, but you can see it came out really nice. I think it looks very OEM. Again, it really uh, kind of looks like the TRX 450ER or the Honda 400EX. That's where they typically have these batteries. I think it looks good. We've got good clearance and there is a cover uh, that I ordered that goes up here. It's on back order, but it'll just cover that starter relay. This uh, little bit, you can see the back here. I think that's out of harm's way though. We've got good clearance and I don't think we're gonna have any issues at all. Up here you can see we've got a nice open space. That was just a bad spot for that tiny little battery, at least in my opinion. And at this point, the only thing left to do is to crank her over and see how it works. All right, let's give her a shot. We'll do it with the choke on. You can hear how quick it starts up. I think it's just because it cranks over so much quicker than it would with a smaller battery. Um, like I said in the beginning of this video, this thing was always just kind of not the, uh, the most reliable with starting. Now we won't know for sure until we put some time on this thing. Uh, probably when I take it out uh, for another trip and I'm constantly starting and stopping, that's when I'll really get an idea. Uh, but I just can't imagine this not being a more improved setup over stock. It's just a bigger battery. It's really not that complicated. So any tools and products that I put on this thing that are applicable, I'll put that in the description below if you guys are looking to do your own battery relocate. It's kind of like one of those things where you know you could do it your own way or you could try to do it my way with a little bit of custom fabrication. Pretty much anybody can do this modification. So if you enjoyed this video or it helped you out in any way, please hit that thumbs up button. That helps me out a ton. Also consider hitting the subscribe button. And until the next video, guys, peace out. What the f dude? Well, at least there wasn't the battery that time. I think the carburetor just needs to be cleaned.